Hello, everyone. Welcome to Edge of Faith Essentials Podcast, an educational podcast that provides essential information, tips, and topics about education, leadership, and topics related to diverse learners. I'm your host, Dr. Nikia. And when we talk about those diverse learners, we focus on students with disabilities who are being served under IDEA, Section 504, Response to Intervention, English Speakers of Other Languages, and other diverse topics, including, of course, special education. Edge of Faith Essentials' mission is to provide positive awareness to promote equity and inclusion in education by sharing information about topics and how to support those non-traditional learnings. Edge of Faith Essentials' goal is to restore faith in education one student at a time by empowering you, my listeners and my viewers, with knowledge because we all know that knowledge is power, so let's be powerful. All students matter. We just have to unlock those gifts. So let's jump in today for today. So today we're going to talk about college bound transitions and ways you can prepare your student with a disability for college life in the college transition. I want to start off with a little edu- faith inspiration. I always like to have an inspirational story. And today's stories are related to the topics of college readiness. One of them is called Unconventional College Experiences. And this story I want to bring you is about Deanna Pruse. She met Dr. Pam Lindsay and her daughter was a daughter who had autism. And together they talked about the lack of education options for students with intellectual disabilities. So in 2009, they co-founded the nonprofit College of Adaptive Arts in San Jose, California. The College of Adapted Arts provides equitable college experiences for students with special needs who have who historically would have not had the opportunity to go to college. It's an unaccredited school and it's structured like the typical college experience. It offers 10 majors, including business, theater, dance, health and wellness. Students can pursue an undergraduate diploma, a graduate or a postgraduate diploma. So here is Ms. Deanna Pruse, and today that school has about 350 students enrolled. In 2020, they formed a partnership with West Valley College, which has provided that full college experience because now students are actually living on campus and being on a college campus so they can get that firsthand experience. So if you want more information about this inspirational message, um, check out the College of Adaptive Arts for more information, and you could also provide a donation. And here are the links to the College of Adaptive Arts. And here is how you can donate to the college. And there's actually a story on CNN. So you can actually look at that story and get a little bit more information about it. So that's our first inspirational story for today. The next inspirational story falls in line with our unconventional college experience. So this story is about a student named Clay and it's called A Journey to Independence. And it's about a student named Clay who actually has autism and he decides he wants to go to college. Well, of course, Clay's parents wanted him to have a gentle transition toward the college experience. And they wanted to keep him in that bubble like us parents do. We wanna shield our kids from everything. So they wanted to kind of shield him from that typical college experience. So they were focused on, you know, slowly integrating and providing him with that experience but they felt, you know, they were hesitant because of his disability, it would be actually difficult or impossible for him to navigate. So they had a different plan. Well, as if you are a parent, you already know that our kids' plans are not our plans. And he actually wanted the full college experience of being on college, being in college, living in a dorm, and learning about dolphins and research and training. So he wanted that experience just like his sister did. And he wanted be totally in control of his life and have that college experience on campus. So he and his friends applied and they were accepted into a small college in the Florida Keys. Beautiful environment, the Florida Keys. So he knew and he embraced that he would be like the other college students. His parents had reservations and they arranged for actually a support person at the college to provide that weekly check-in and help him problem solve. He did have a college peer and they had a college peer program, but you know, when you're in college and you're on your own, it's, it's up to the student to actually go and seek those services. So it was a, it was there for him and he did utilize that, but 
he did actually have to navigate and own his own obstacles because peer support only provides, you know, so much experience. So the parents were excited to have that, but really in hindsight, it was up to him to be independent and go seek those services. Well, he entered college and like all college students did, he did have some obstacles. And one of those obstacles included the meal plan. The meal plan did not provide meals on the weekends. And so that's like the obstacle that his parents couldn't provide or well, college support couldn't help that. And so what he did do is he began searching for recipes and purchasing ingredients and making his own meals from scratch. Talk about creative creativity. He also learned he had to find a balance between his life and his responsibilities with his friends and school. So for instance, there was a, a, a issue where his his family or his friends wanted him to go with him to an appointment and Clay had another obligation that he wanted to get to and so instead of saying no he went to that other obligation and the bus didn't arrive on time so what happened was he ended up having to walk back to the other obligation and he missed his diving course it was a diving course that he wanted to go to and he missed his first diving session because he was there with his friend and the bus didn't come on time so he had to walk back so that was a lesson in time management and learning the power of no. Needless to say, he figured out college life and he made those successful learning gains. And he actually volunteered at a Dolphin Research Center. He learned the bus system. So the lesson in that was he learned time management. He learned the bus system. He made friends. He enlisted the support of his friends and his coaches and all his people, his community, his college community. He learned how to do his own laundry. He cut his own hair, he dines out, he exercises on, on his own, he even gave the blood. Needless to say, he's made a successful college transition. He's earned the budget his money. He enjoys his dolphins in the diving club. He hosts dinner parties with his recipes and he asked for help when he needed. But for, for the most part, Clay was successful and he celebrates his successes. So this whole story for you parents, the inspiration in this story is sometimes we have to let go and give our children, our students with disabilities, or even if there's a student without a disability, their independence, even when it's scary. I think about this story and I reflect on my personal connection with my own son who has a disability, one of my sons. And when he entered college, he had a couple of issues with transition to, he actually had an incident because he's on the spectrum. And so his communication was misinterpreted um, for something else and his, the school acted and it was all fine, but it was just a part of his disability and the way he expresses himself. And so the school, you know, had some concerns about some things. And I realized in that lesson that he was homesick. And then I talked to him about ways to better express himself where things are not misconstrued because it was just a big misunderstanding. And I, in my lesson, I realized that he was homesick. So that weekend, I actually went home with him during his first year of college. I went home, went to his college town and we spent the weekend and hung out and had dinner and kind of talked about the incident and we put it behind us. So as a parent, sending your child to college, I know it can be scary. It's a big, scary world out there, but we have to let go. We have to support our children and empower them and be there as a parent because parenting doesn't go away just because they're in college. So through his obstacle, my own son was successful and now he is an AB honor roll student. Um, he's a resident assistant on his college campus. So he has a job on campus. He have other students moving the dorm. His professors love him and he's really sore too. But he did have a couple of bumpy obstacles and ways to navigate he had to figure out his own way to navigate into the world of college life. And as a parent, I had to let go too. This also reminds me of one of his favorite movies, speaking of him, and letting go in Finding Nemo. So when you think about the movie Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo, Marlon had to actually let go of Nemo. And he was so protective and he wanted to keep Nemo in this bubble. And of course, Nemo got free and Nemo was empowered. And he got to see the growth and how independent and successful Nemo was because he actually had fostered and navigated him and built that positive relationship of parenting him throughout life for him to be successful and independent. So that's what we have to remember, parents. The world is scary and our kids want to live their own lives and they want to be successful. And so we have parented them and nurtured them. But once we do that, we have to allow some freedom if they're able to and allow them to leave the nest and make their own decisions and start navigating the world beyond high school. So you know, that's our role as parents. And that's why we do what we do. 
So that was my edge of faith inspiration. And I love those two stories. So please, like I said, parents, we have to let our students grow up. And then of course, the college, College of Adaptive Arts, you know, please go in there and take a look and see if you're interested into donating or to find more information because this and from this whole podcast is to empower you with knowledge. So parents, if you have a child with an intellectual disability, maybe check out that college. And for my parents or other students in college with disabilities that are not necessarily intellectual, take heed because if your child decides to go to college, we have to let go, even though there is hard and there are hard. So let's shift into our essential news. And today we're talking about college options. So of the nearly 22 million students enrolled in colleges and in universities, so we're gonna go back to this intellectual disability topic in college for intellectual disability students. Students today with intellectual disabilities have many opportunities and programs where they can actually attend and live in college. So we talked about the College of Adaptive Arts, but also the University of Central Florida has 13 programs where they have allow students with um, the IQ of intellectual disability actually serve and actually be on campus. So they do not actually seek a bachelor's degree, but there's a five semester program that provides them with the credentials intended for them to be successful. They could take courses in adulthood and career, and they could also attend those regular UCF courses without receiving college grades or credits, but it's all about that experience. So, so far 24 students have been enrolled to date and they reside on campus at the University of Central Florida. They participate in all activities and the cost for those classes was about 40,000 for in-state, but there are some scholarships available for families if they're interested in that. So we got the College of Adaptive Arts and then of course the University of Central Florida, which has a program to support those intellectual students with intellectual disabilities. When you look at college options, some other news I wanna share is Best Value Schools is one of those websites that provides information about programs geared towards students with special needs. Think College is a national organization that's dedicated to developing, expanding, and providing that inclusive higher education option for many students with intellectual disabilities. And then Think College, they provide information for both students and families, as well as, well as work directly with college universities to develop programs. So that is the link if you want to see where I got this information from. I actually found it in a parenting special needs article and it talked about college programs as close as they think, think. So you could check out that link and read all about it. So our essential news and knowledge for today, because we have to gain knowledge, knowledge is power, is for pre-graduation planning. So graduation really comes as it comes fast when you're parenting a child. So when you're planning for pre-graduation with your child with a disability or just your child without a disability, while that student is still in high school, take some time to plan some college trips and allow them to get acquainted with college life. Allow them to meet with their counselors and advisors to talk about any special accommodations that student might require. Have a discussion with your child and see what their interests are and really what they want to do. When we look at Clay's story, his parents had one thing in mind, but Clay had a different one. And so the parents had an awakening where they had to allow Clay to do what he wanted to do as far as be independent. And then visit thinkcollege.net for more information about those specific programs for students with intellectual disabilities. Also, my actual business, Edge of Faith Consulting, I also work with college options and providing college options and plans and working with families to get their students into college too. So that's a part of my business. So you can also get acquainted with the school counselor, but you can also reach out to Edge of Faith Consulting and I can help you along your way with your child's college transition. So let's go ahead and keep it moving. So when we're looking at the pre-college transition, for students with disabilities, I wanna talk about transitions period. So transition services are an integral part of the free and appropriate public education under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So transition services provide that FAPE and special education and related services to meet that child's needs and prepare them for further education and employment options and independent living. Location agencies, LEAs, and state vocational rehab agencies actually partner up and participate together to help students make those decision-making processes and future post-school goals. So 
school districts and the vocational rehab facilities actually work together to prepare students with disabilities for these options. And I'm gonna tell you about a little bit about vocational rehab a little bit later. So when you're looking at college readiness and transition, that last year, if your child is a student with an IEP, an individual education plan, they should walk away and have a summary of performance because it is required for all students with IEPs. And so even if that student is getting a regular diploma or um, a age diploma, they should get a summary of performance with a company document, a company and documentation to assist that student with their transition, education, training, or employment. That summary of performance document actually serves as a district documentation, and it summarizes the academic achievement and performance under IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. It is also a useful tool when you're working with vocational rehab to try to get into that vocational rehab um, process and get those services. It actually helps with that assessment process. The information about the student's current functioning level is intended to help those post-secondary institutions consider accommodations for access. So during that senior year, a summary performance document should come away with their child before they graduate or when they graduate, if they're, they are, if it is, if your child is a student with a disability. So let's talk about vocational rehab. Vocational rehab is a state agency that offers post-secondary support services to students with disabilities. The chief role of VR vocational rehab, rehab services is to empower individuals with disabilities to help them make informed choices about their careers and provide them with a continuum services to achieve employment outcomes. Students with disabilities are offered services and there are a wide range of services that they can receive under the vocational rehab program. Vocational rehab is for students who, are, who have disabilities. So that means students under section 504 and students who are served under IDEA. The services available will differ and it's based on that child's individual, individual need, but just know that, that vocational rehab services are there and they partner up to support students with disabilities. So when we're looking at vocational rehab, to be eligible, the students must meet a couple of criteria. So that means one of those criteria include having a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits a life activity or a limit impairment to employment. And the student must require services to prepare, secure, retain, advance, and or gain employment. So those are the qualifications. And like I said, it's a service for students with disabilities, regardless if they will actually apply for vocational rehab services or not, that service is there. And some of those conversations should be happening during your senior year or your child's senior year, that connection should be made with those IEP teams to talk about those services. So once you're looking at vocational rehab, there usually is an assessment to assess the needs and what type of skills the student requires. Once they actually are um, looking into the services, some of those services includes counseling and guidance, including information about ser supporting services to assist in exercising their inform, inform cons consistent and provisions and their rights. Some other services include referral and other services to secure needed services, such as those other agencies. So a vocational rehab can't really provide a service or the, the buck stops there, they actually can refer you to other agencies. Job-related services, including job searches and placements and retention and services, as well as follow-up services. So I mentioned this before, but usually during that senior year, the local education agency, so our school districts, and the vocational rehab, vocational rehab program, they partner up and they usually sometimes attend those IEP meetings and become partners during that senior year. They pair up, there's usually a vocational rehab counselor that provides support and guidance. And like I said, sometimes they actually participate in the IEP meetings and introduce these services to families. They may assist with college finances. So based on a certain income level, if you get those vocational rehab services, they could actually assist with some of those financial costs associated with college. And every state has a vocational rehab department. So you could actually go to ed.gov and find out where your vocational rehab agency is located in your state and city. So for your graduating seniors, 
want to make sure that you get a copy of the following documents. Of course, your diploma, but then if they have an IEP, you want to have a copy of their transition plan and a copy of their last current 504 plan if it's a student with a um, 504 plan. So either their finalized last IEP with transition plan or their section 504 plan, the current one for the school year, because the college is going to want that. You want to make sure if they're getting special education services, they get a copy of that summary performance to take to the college. A recent psychological, sometimes vocational rehab can actually help you get a free psychological. So for instance, my son, when he graduated that summer, they actually gave him a free psychological and he actually took that psychological and his summary of performance and his IEP to the college and he actually got accommodations. And then there's actually something called an IPE from vocational rehab, which is a plan that they actually write in their centers too. If you have a student that's being dual enrolled, you want to get a copy of that college transcript and take that with them as well. So when we're talking about once a kid in is, a student is in college, I want you to know that they can actually get accommodations in college. So post-secondary institutions such as um, colleges, private colleges and universities and not religious entities actually apply with Title III of the Americans with Disabilities Amendment Act, which means that students with disabilities are entitled to protections at the collegiate level. Those protections include Section 504 and Title II require that post-secondary institutions provide students with disabilities accommodations, including appropriate academic adjustments, auxiliary aids, and services. So under the U.S. Department of Education, a post-secondary institution have to provide those services. So students and parents, you must, students and parents, you have to be proactive in advocating now. So that means you have to actually provide these documents at the college and actually request these things because now we're in a different form or realm where the student has to advocate and the college is not going to automatically know that your child is a child with a disability. You have to advocate and provide that information and actually speak up to get those students, those services. Students with disabilities are encouraged to be informed about their rights and be active in advocating for these services. So when we talk about some examples of auxiliary aids and services, that means like tape text, closed caption decoders, and some of these other topics. So these are some of the aids and services that a student who's in a collegiate level, some of those services they actually get at the college level. A lot of colleges now actually have um, disability centers to help support and disability services. And so those are those places that you'll go and provide the information and actually get those accommodations. And some institutions actually have places where kids can go, students can go and take tests and have that quiet place or that extended time and take their assessments and tests and do their assignments through that disability center's office. So when you're leaving, my essential tips for you today is make sure if you have a college senior, take note. So you wanna make sure that you have a copy of your child's current plan, as I mentioned. IEP or 504. Like I said, post-secondary institutions may accept 504 plans since they are still regulated under the Americans with Disabilities Act and Title II is under the Americans with Disabilities Act. But if your child has an IEP, you want to make sure that you have a copy of that IEP, that summary performance document. And then if you can get a current psychological, that would be great because a lot of times they want to see that current psychological, but you couldn't get through vocational rehab. And then, as I mentioned, the summary of performance, make sure you identify and look when you're searching for college, colleges search for the disability centers on those college campuses. So you can be ready to reach out and advocate and provide those documents and get those services for your child. So identify those services ahead of time. So those are just my essential tips for you today. A lot of the information that I provided, I talk about really in my essential tips for parents book and Chapter eight, I talk about all of this information and resources. I'm just giving you just a little snapshot. And like I said, EduFaith, my actual, actual um, business actually supports college and preparation and application process and searching for those disability centers and advocating. So my actual business, EduFaith Consulting, actually provides those services for college and career students and help them with their transition once they're in college and at, after college. So if you really want that service, I am here. You can look me up on Educate Essentials and I'll be glad to help support your student, whether your child has a disability or not, getting those services and talking to the colleges and help you navigate the way through that college transition and in thereafter. So just know I'm there and I can start working with your student 
as, as young as 10th grade all the way up. So just know that Edge of Faith Essentials got your back if you ever need any questions or support with college readiness. And I am a nationwide company, so I will research and find what I need to find for you. So I'm going to read for you a chapter from my book, Chapter 8 from Essential Tips for Parents of Students with Disabilities. And Chapter 8 is titled Leaving the Nest, Transition, College, and Post-Secondary Options. Parenting is one of the most important jobs you'll ever have in your parenting life. Parenting can be challenging yet rewarding. However, the return on investment supersedes any struggles. Parenting a child with disability offers an exceptional return on investment. I believe certain parents are selected for this journey. Through the journey, there will be lessons, accomplishments, and blessings. Whether a child has a disability or not, one of the greatest accomplishments to most parents is high school graduation. Our children enter kindergarten and we go through all of the transitions only to, only to prepare them to leave the nest and prepare for adulthood and graduation. Children really do grow up fast. I recall my proud mom moment when Alex graduated from high school. His only services by this time was other health impairment. He was being served because of his ADHD. He had since then had been dismissed for speech language and the autism program when he was back in middle school. Over time, I developed close relationships with his case manager. And during his senior year, we were making those post-graduation plans. When he was 14, I started participating in those transition meetings. And during that time, I felt like graduation was so far away. But graduation came sooner than I thought. Preparation for life and the standard academic years is equally as important as those years in school. The parenting journey does not end because a child graduates. Graduation or school completion is a monumental accomplishment. However, there is life beyond grade school. You have to continue the parenting journey and guide your child for life after high school. And so that's where chapter eight actually comes in. And I actually share like a little heartfelt moment when he melted my heart during my senior year and I realized that he was about to graduate. And so if you want to hear about that, you got to read the book. It's in chapter eight and it's in that introduction section. So Essential Tips for Parents, Chapter 8 talks about college readiness, and I provide that comprehensive information as well as I have Edge of Faith Consulting to help support you. So that book is available on Amazon, so get you a copy and share it with some parents. So now we're looking at our essential advice. So if you have anything you want to ask me, ask Dr. Nakia. I want to provide or read your letter because your letter could help someone else. So if you want to email me any question about Section 504, your child with disabilities, or anything with English speakers of other languages or diverse learners, or even leadership, please email me at edufaithforall at gmail.com. And I will read your letter on the air and I will discuss your topic and give you my advice and my opinion, which is what it is, an opinion. You can take it or leave it. So my words of wisdom for today, no sky, no, the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning which is by Donovan Livingston. And I think that is a perfect um, quote for today when we're talking about our students who are going into college because it's not the limit when they go to college, it's only the beginning. Their life is just beginning even after high school because there's life after high school. So remember the sky's not the limit, it's only the beginning. In closing, if you need any services or assistance about any of the topics that I talked about today, I've already mentioned this before, but EduFaith Consulting Educational Services is available for you. If your school or district wants some professional development or even a business about working with diverse learners or topics related to diverse learners and education and leadership, please send me an email and I'll be glad to serve and provide that service. I also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for educators and leaders. And, and I also provide trainings about diverse learning topics, program developments, if you need to develop a program, parenting classes to talk about these topics to parents. So please reach out to my business, EduFaith Educational Services, EduFaith Consulting, and I'll be glad to be here for you and provide my services. I want to encourage everyone to get essential. And to my believers, be blessed. And to all others, be well. All of you guys, be kind and be the change. To get to my website or provide me any information, please reach out and check me out at www.edufaithconsulting.com. This 
podcast is also available on podcast platforms such as Amazon, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google, iTunes, and other podcast platforms. And if you are enjoying this, please go ahead and subscribe to Educate Essentials. And of course, you can watch this on the YouTube page and the links are there as well. So thank you for everything. And you guys have a wonderful day.